What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about one tip against every EX in One Piece Bounty Rush. Now that's just the title to make it a bit more clickbaity, but in this video I'm actually going to go in depth and give you a lot of tips against every single EX in the game. Now think of this as theoretical, maybe classroom-like. Right? What I tell you is going to help you a lot, especially if you're new to the game. However, it doesn't end here. Once you're done, for example, let's say you want to learn how to play Roger, you go into the description and you see the timestamp that speaks about Roger. Once you're done with that, you actually need to go in-game and practice these things. But another general tip against all EXs is to actually just watch gameplay. Watch gameplay of great players using these characters and see how they're thinking. See what goes through their mind so that you can understand how to counter that. And that's general advice that you can use against every character in the game. And another tip is that, for example, let's say your main is Onigashima Law. Then just watch people use Onigashima Law and see how they're facing their different matchups. Especially players that are the highest end of the league, they will face a lot of EXs and top tier characters. So watch people use the characters you main and see how they're thinking because they will give you tips that you might have not known. Maybe you forgot about a trait. Maybe you didn't understand a certain thing about a certain matchup. And watching gameplay over and over is going to help you. Trust me, guys. That's how I improved at the game. And I'm sure that's going to help you guys a lot. So first thing we're going to talk about or the first EX we're going to talk about is EX Blackbeard. So we're going to start off with the first EX to ever come out in One Piece Bounty Rush, EX Blackbeard. Now, you can attack while getting sucked by his skill 1 if you have Nullify Stagger as a trait. So we're going to use the example here of Bikini Nami. And you can see that he sucks me in. And then because I have Nullify Stagger, I can use my skill right after and damage him. Now, if you have a skill that has Nullify Stagger, it will work a bit differently. You need to time it properly so that as soon as he starts to suck you in, you use your skill. That way, he actually just brings you in and you complete the skill on him. But you cannot actually use it once he starts sucking you in. And Blackbeard is good against power users. He will deal more damage to them. So if you're a power user, beware of that. And he also tanks attackers better. So if you're atta an attacker, then be careful. And also, he's good against multi-hits because he will get his skill to faster. So of course, shout out to Pelicid for this. But if you pay attention to his skill 2 here, once Dofi start attacking him, you can see boom, 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 boom. His skill 2 is filling up very quickly. Now, if your character does multi-hit, it's going to fill up even faster than that. So be careful. If you're going to use a multi-hit attack on Blackbeard, beware. Because he might just skill 2 you out of nowhere and you don't know why. So that's why. And he's invincible during it. So that's actually a very powerful skill. So be careful of multi-hits if you're not going to kill him. And now his counters are characters that cannot get status inflicted or characters that reduce that status infliction. And there are actually a couple tips you can do again. So here, shout out to Nico-chan. But if you can see, Kawamatsu has reduced the time of darkness, for example. So as soon as she gets sucked in, boom, just dodges, right? So that's because she got darked from getting skill one, but reduced the time like Frankie and like uh, Ulti. So that's something to keep in mind. You can actually just dodge that skill one once you reach him, and that's actually a very good tip. And finally, characters that cannot get status inflicted at all can have a nice tip against his skill two. So here's a Robin, shout out to Robin. Now Blackbeard's gonna come, he's gonna start his skill two, right? Now, as soon as this part ends and he goes into his second part, you unleash and you just get a perfect dodge. And now this works with any character that just cannot get dark in general. So that's great tip against Blackbeard. So we're gonna move on next to EX Shanks. Against Shanks, you want to keep in mind that he has a counter and with every counter character, there are mind games going on. You can't just use your skill all willy-nilly or use your normals whenever you want. You have to keep in mind that they're going to have their counters. And with Shanks, a very important thing to keep in mind is that once he gets two KOs, his counter gets refilled automatically. So if you see him use a counter, get two kills, his counter is back up immediately. So I want to show this example. Shout out to Juna Future for this. And here he's going to attack. And and once he uses his counter, bam, you see it instantly filled up to 50% because he got one KO. So if he got two, it would have just filled up instantly. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Learn how to play against counter characters. It's something that's going to take a while and 
some getting used to but shanks like every counter character you need to do that training also shanks skill 2 takes a long time to actually happen like you can see it coming from afar so just practice the dodge timing and that's just something you need to look out for it's not hard to dodge but you need to see it coming also he can't be stunned so if your character relies on stunning him just keep in mind that he cannot be stunned and he's good against attackers he actually deals more damage to attackers and who counters Shanks? Well, you know, he's not that new of a unit, so he's not that great. But if we took it seriously, uh, characters with high damage reduction. So shout out to Happy OPBR for this. But uh, as you can see, Shanks is just attacking Garp for 10 damage. And that's because he doesn't have damage increases. So he's actually just hitting uh, Garp for 10 and 1 and very small damage that's just because he doesn't have damage increase traits so if a character has a hundred percent damage reduction shanks just cannot damage him so that's something you want to keep in mind 1.5 year anniversary of one piece bounty rush brought with it ex big mom who at the time was a menace so the first tip is to not attack her while she's in her state unless you have a long range skill that's not attached to your character otherwise there's a 50 percent chance you'll be shocked so we'll talk about these types of projectiles in a bit but for now let's take a look at this clip so so here she is, she dodges, which makes Shanks use his skill, but she gets into her state, which shocks Shanks, and then 50% chance and shocks both of us. So she was able to capture that flag because of that 50%. Now, some attacks will actually not be affected by this, and if you want to know what type, well, take a look at Happy OPBR's video on the types of projectiles in One Piece Bounty Rush. Now, for example, there is a type that will stop when making contact with barrels, and others will just go through everything. So. A great example would be Mihawk. Mihawk's skill that knocks you back actually gets affected by the shock of Big Mom. Whereas the one that goes through walls that has multiple slashes actually will not be affected. So you can actually use it and there's no chance that Big Mom will shock you. So that's the first tip. The second one is that when she's in her state, she cannot be shocked. So if your strategy revo revolves around shocking someone, well, that can't happen. And also, you have to learn that she has a skill that's a charge skill. And you have to do mind games. So for example, you can attack her once so that she panics maybe and unleashes it so you can dodge. Because the more she charges it, the more powerful and the more knockback she has. So you have to play mind games. And the best way to do that is to just have more EX Big Mom matchups, watch more EX Big Mom gameplays and stuff like that. So she's good against multi-hits, of course, because every hit has a chance of uh, shocking you. So she's good against characters that will hit often because they will get shocked. And characters that counter her are characters that cannot get status inflicted or cannot be shocked. So for example, Frankie here can be shocked, but his duration is lowered. So boom, as soon as uh, she shocks me, it just ends pretty much instantly. So her strategy cannot work because now she cannot charge skill and just knock me back to capture the treasure. Now Frankie cannot get knocked back anyways, but you guys get the point. So yeah, if your character doesn't get shocked or stuck, then Big Mom is out of luck. So yeah. That's that for Big Mom, and let's move to EX Odin. So for the second anniversary, we got Odin first, and when he came out, people were confused on how to stop him from capping the flag. So there are two ways. Either you attack him from outside the circle where he's capping, or you knock him back. So let's take a look at Izo doing it. Now, Izo has a lot of range, but you don't need insane range like Izo to stop him, as long as you're attacking from outside the circle. Now also, Izo did attack him, but of course at full HP and above 97% and stuff, he has a lot of resist stagger and stuff, so you actually need to deal a bit of damage before he actually stops, but that's something you need to keep in mind also you can knock him back and that will help now now if you cannot do these things the best thing you can do is actually not stay in that treasure area maybe wait for him so you can attack him once he finishes outside the circle but the reason why you don't want to be in that circle is because if a teammate can knock him back or attack him from outside the treasure area if you're inside it you actually will not stop him so you need to be outside for your teammate to be able to stop him so that's something you need to keep in mind also he's good against a 50 percent damage increase to defenders in their treasure area so depending on your set it might be best to fight him outside his treasure area and unless your set gives you more than 50 percent damage reduction against runners so for example Anki frankie has 50% DR against his runners in his treasure area. So that's a no-brainer. You want to fight in your treasure area because you get so many advantages. Uh, Kaido, for example, he will be tankier outside. However, you want to be in your treasure area because you get so many benefits with Kaido. So of course, you need to understand the matchups. But Garp, for instance, doesn't get that much damage reduction against runners, especially not against the green because zone grand line will not affect greens. So it might be best for Garp to fight uh, someone like Odin outside the treasure area and then actually just stop him with your skills or your normals when he starts capturing because Garp can knock back. 
Now, of course, if you cannot knock back, then you want to be in the treasure area just to stop him. But someone like Kawamatsu, maybe another character that has little DR, it might be best to just fight him outside the treasure area, then use your skills to knock him outside once he starts capping, right? Just so you can be more tanky that way. So that's something you need to keep in mind because look at how much damage here Lookman is doing to Garp. Quite a lot. Every single hit is actually dealing a lot. So of course, shout out to Lookman for this. But yeah, as you can see, he's dealing a couple thousand every single hit. His skills are dealing a lot of damage and it probably will deal a bit less, uh, of course, if Garp was outside this treasure area. Now, of course, he might have sets uh, like medals and tags that will benefit him from being inside. But in general, being outside is something you want to consider. And that's... Uh, on a case-to-case -case basis that's not a general information i can give you guys and of course um counters are characters that cannot be stunned or cannot be knocked back so for example frankie like because he has a skill that teleports and then stuns you and then does a second hit so if you cannot get stunned you can actually dodge it much easier now for example look at this boom he doesn't deal that much damage to frankie but he also doesn't knock back frankie which is great for Frankie because, well, you're in the treasure area and you can stop him from capping. So that's a very good thing. Also, um, defenders that cannot get knocked back, obviously, long range characters because they will stop him from capping and knocked back characters, right? So let's take a look at this. For example, Sabo is going to come here and shout out to uh, Mamba for this clip. But as you can see, he cannot get aflamed, right? When he's capping, he cannot be status inflicted. But because this Sabo was outside the treasure area, he actually stopped him from capping. Now, if that Sabo attacked from inside, then it wouldn't have stopped him. Now, also, you can notice that Odin did not get aflamed, right? So, while these attacks probably would have aflamed uh, him, he did not because he was capping at the time. So, as you can see, the flame will not stop him, but being outside the treasure will stop him. So, if your strategy is to, you know, uh, stun him or something, he will not be able to get stunned. It's not like Yamato. All right, and finally, just knock back defenders. So as you can see here, Lookman is uh, capping, but at the last second, um, characters with normals that knock back, like Sengoku, will stop him. So again, depending on your character, it might be best to not fight him in the treasure area, for example, because you, he will deal a lot of damage. Now, let's talk about the main man himself, EX Goldie Roger, that came for the second year anniversary of One Piece Bounty Rush. And the first tip I can give you is to dodge Kamusaris. And the reason why is because He's going to get an attack buff every Kamusari he lands, and 20% each time is massive. And so, of course, one tip I can give you to help you dodge those are to look at your connection. If you have a 3-bar connection or a 2-bar connection, you're going to get into a game, private battle with your friend who has Roger, and just make him use Kamusaris and try to dodge them. Look at the timing and when you should dodge. But if you have a 1-bar connection, then you're pretty much going to have to predict it. Now, the window of opportunity is very small, and so there's this bug in the game. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, but that people call the dodger abuse and let's look at soul do it here and he's going to use it against skill 2 but it works against any skill in the game yeah as you can see he dodged but he didn't get hit even though he dodged a bit too early so let's go back to that and let's check it out so boom he uses this and then uses that and then dodges right now normally he would end here and then he would get hit by the skill but because he let go and he's not doing anything else he actually has this iframe, so he iframes the skill. Now, if he moves or uses an attack right after, like in this case here, he dodges, but then attacks, boom, it actually hits him. If he didn't attack, he would have actually dodge abuse and it wouldn't have hit him. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Practice this. It's not that hard. Just let go of this and that's it. That's pretty much the dodge abuse. It works on everyone, but it's especially effective against Roger because Roger's just that fast in his skills. And since you have to time the skill to dodge, it's actually very hard to predict. And this can help you just have a dodge. Now, for example, if he's holding skill 2, just walk away. If you walk away, the Roger might panic thinking you might be out of range and use the skill. So just walk away and then mind game it out and then dodge when he feels you're gonna get out of range that's when you should dodge a bit before that that way you dodge abuse and he doesn't actually land it but he panics because he has to let go otherwise he will just completely miss you right so that's something you want to get into consideration also you want to use knockbacks only when he's using his skill too okay and let's take a look at this example here 
Um, now, this guy is charging his skill 2, and boom, you get knockback, right? Shout out to Paradox for this clip. But in general, if you see him doing skill 2, now this guy did not... Uh, Paradox here actually outplayed that Kainu by not getting aflamed or uh, incinerated because he uses skill 2. But if he was using skill 2 and then a Kainu used that skill to knock him back so that he prevents skill 2, that's another great idea. So save your knockback for whenever he's using skill 2 because that's a menace of a skill and you want to use it to get rid of that because that's the only way to pretty much stop him from uh, using skill 2. Okay? Otherwise, he has damage reduction when he's using skill 2 and he cannot be status inflicted as you can see from this and we're also going to look at this here see boom he uses this skill so that he cannot get aflamed or anything and as soon as he does that he's uh, taking much less damage cannot get aflamed and it's just helping him out so much right so these are players outplaying a kainu with roger just by using their skill 2 at the right time to not get aflamed okay next uh, just use big attacks or small attacks against him anything between 20 to 30 percent of his health will actually heal him so let's take a look at an example here right he, uh, paradox is attacking this odin and then from behind frankie attacks him but as you can see frankie did not deal damage and the reason why is because frankie dealt 5k damage but roger heals 7k so if you deal little damage you're actually just going to end up healing him you have to deal very small damage or very big damage anything in between 20 or 30 percent of his health will actually just heal him up so when you're attacking him look at these multipliers if you see that he's healing more than the damage you're dealing then maybe try to avoid that fight because you're just going to end up healing him especially if your teammates got him to 50 percent the last thing you want to do is fucking heal him back up to full right so that's something you want to keep in mind and of course um he's good against stun characters right so here, for example, the Rayleigh is going to use the skill, which is a terrible idea because, yeah, it damaged him a bit, but he buffed his defense in the process. So now he has much higher defense. It was insane. I think it's 70% defense buff or some crazy shit like that. So you definitely don't want to just give him that buff for free. And he's good against opponents with uh, buffs. So if your opponents buff themselves, they shouldn't be happy because like let's say this ex luffy buffed himself buffed his attack is very happy he's like dealing more damage well guess what you're gonna come in with a roger and deal more now you might say okay how do i know well look at this inflicted damage increase 30 percent damage increase to characters that buff themselves and that's any buff so not just a attack buff a defense buff any kind of buff roger will give a 30 percent damage increase against and of course if the opponent he's facing has high hp roger himself will get nullify snagger which allows you to basically counter when they're attacking you which is crazy now counters to roger are characters that cannot get stunned or status inflicted right because if uh, he stuns you he's locking you into place he can guarantee a skill land on you so that's a small way to deal with him not being able to get stunned also high damage reduction defenders that have no buffs so if your damage uh reduction if you're a defender that has a lot of damage reduction you can actually just tank him and he won't get that 30 percent damage increase because you don't have any buffs on yourself now if you have a buff then suddenly he's getting that 30 percent damage increase which allows him to deal much more damage to you so ideally you're a high damage reduction with no defense buff no attack buff no speed buff nothing like that also if you have knockbacks and you saved for your skill 2, that's another way to counter him. And fixed damage when he's not using skill 2 is very good because uh, you're just going to constantly lower his health and he's not going to heal from that. And multi-hits because multi-hits uh, usually have low damage and so you're dealing low damage over time which will slowly uh, cut his health uh, down. So those are the tips against uh, Roger. Next, we're going to talk about the menace of OPBR, the 2.5 anniversary monster that refuses to die despite Bandai's attempts at releasing countless counters. This guy's still a beast. And the first tip is to not fall for his normal attacks before he uses his skill 2. Because the menace normal attacks come after the skill 2. So unless he's in his magma state, do not dodge until you know he uses his skill 2. Of course, the skill 1 as well. But... Don't fall for the one hit and then dodge because then you guarantee to get hit by the skill too. So it's pretty easy to dodge. He puts his hand in the air like he don't care and then it falls. You just dodge and that's it. It's very simple. And then if you have a multi-hit attack, you can just remove his shields and, you know, run away. Right? That's what she does. <laughs> Here, shout out Niko-chan. Goodbye, Kainu. She plays it well with, of course, the cutest character in the game. But that's the first tip. Do not fall for his normals. Wait till he uses his skill too, puts his hand in the air, and that's when you dodge. Okay, next, again from Nico-chan, is to, you know, use the puddles, right? So you can either fall in the puddles, so you get your dodge back, 
so that uh, you get your dodge because he actually increases the dodge time. But you can also just perfect dodge into these if you have your dodge up. So for example here, uh, she has her perfect dodge, boom, she dodges into it, gets a free perfect dodge, right? But sometimes you don't get your dodge because he will increase the timer of your dodge. So in that case, uh, you don't want to risk getting hit by his attacks that actually have a lot of damage, and boom, you just fall into it. See, that's very good. That's a very good advice here by Nico-chan. Check out her videos, very, very good. And also, uh, dodge his second hit. Once he uses his skill 2, he's going to be in that magma state. It's actually very easy to, to dodge the second hit of his normal. So here, shout out to Hound for this. But as you can see, he doesn't dodge the first hit. Once, boom, you see? Once he attacks the first time, you dodge. That way, you perfect dodge the second hit for free. So now, Akainu players that are good will know that this is how people will play. So they will do one time, one time, one time, right? Instead of doing one, two. This thing works against uh, Sabo as well. But for the time being, that's something you need to keep in mind. If you think that Akainu is going to hit you twice, then you just use... The like, once you see the first one coming, you dodge, you get the perfect dodge on the second one. It's beautiful, it's very nice, it's very simple. And let's replay that just because it was so clean from Mr. Hound. Hound has, like, the best gameplay for me, in my opinion. But boom, free perfect dodge, right? There you go. Okay. Um, who is Akainu good against? He's good against status characters because he himself cannot get status. Of course, he also counters... Uh, like, sorry, he doesn't counter. Characters that counter him are characters that cannot get status inflicted because if you cannot get status inflicted, he cannot get his attack buffs, which is a big uh, de detriment for him because his damage isn't that high in general, right? His damage comes from the incinerate, but at least once he incinerates someone, he gets a lot of attack buff. So if he cannot incinerate someone, then he doesn't get his attack buff. Now, someone like Ulti or Frankie or Kawamatsu that reduce the time of, a f of incinerate, they actually still will give Akainu the attack buff because he actually incinerates them. It just goes quickly, but he still incinerates them. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Um, and also, uh, multi-hits, right? Multi-hits counter him because they will remove his shield. And the high damage reduction um, defenders that cannot get incinerated. So like uh, Jozu. Jozu is a great example, right? Uh, those will counter him very well. And also characters that heal from fixed damage like this Yamato. So let's take a look here from PNG. Um, he's using um, Akainu. He's going to use his skill 1 on Yamato. But if you can look, the Yamato actually heals from that. So now where is Yamato? Uh, 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 next, next. Yeah, you see? The Flame does 950, but Yamato heals 1400. So you're actually just giving Yamato free heals over and over again. Because you, uh, it's the same thing for EX Luffy as well, right? So some of his best counters are defenders that cannot get aflamed, like this Nami, right? Uh, or incinerated, sorry. Because look at this, right? See? Akainu incinerated our Roger. Now, yes, Nami is going to remove the incinerate from the Roger, but Akainu already got his attack buff. However, this next incinerate cannot happen so because he cannot incinerate us again while we're in this circle there we go he's not gonna get his attack buffs and that's what makes nami really good because if a teammate's here they also gonna get incinerated and so any character that cannot get incinerated in general ah fantastic right kaido zephyr uh, uh, jozu stuff like that you know they can be very nice and finally of course other characters that just cannot get status inflicted as a whole like sabo right uh, if you see here, this is uh, from Mamba, but it's of course Mary Jade's gameplay. Mary Jade known as a Sabo simp. You hate simps. You hate to see them. I'm just kidding. I love I love Mary Jade. But um, look here. Akainu does his skill 1, which should guarantee the aflame. But of course, Sabo's in his state, so he cannot get aflamed because he's already or incinerated because he's already in his state. Right? So these are a couple things you need to keep in mind. So next is EX Yamato. Now the first tip is actually an interesting one is to learn the voice lines because both her skills look similar. And so when she says Bokuwa Oden, then you know it's the counter. And you just need to learn the timing of the counter. Do not hit her and you'll be good. Right, so let's take a look at an example of Hound. So there's audio in this one, so I won't talk, but I don't know if the audio is going to be good, so just bear with me here. So she says, Bokuwa Oden, and then Hound doesn't panic. He knows the timing of the counter, so he gets a perfect dodge, and he doesn't get hit, he doesn't get knocked back, he doesn't take the damage, and more importantly, Yamato doesn't get her defense buff. For the charge skill, she will just make a sound, something like ah, or something like that. Look, I don't know why I sounded retarded there, but um, only dodge it when it's fully charged. Because anything else, she's going to deal less damage 
And so unless you're gonna die, then you can just wait till it's fully charged because at fully charged, she'll get an attack buff and she'll knock you back. Also, under 50% HP, she actually deals more damage. So, you know, for the charge skill, just pretty much your best bet is to either mind game it or to just wait till it's fully charged and then dodge it, okay? So do not try to status her when she's using her charge skill. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And to stop her from capping, there are two methods. It's not about range anymore. It's about you have to status her or knock her back. So let's take a look at this clip. Boom. So as you can see, this is from Easy. He's EX Yamato gameplay. And Roger from outside the treasure area hit Yamato, but she did not stop capping. This would have stopped Odin from capping, but it did not stop Yamato. Now, if the Roger got lucky and got the stun off, it would have stopped her, but he didn't. So the stun didn't go off. So she was able to continue capturing, right? And of course, knockback so knockback with normals or with skills this is from uh dumolto very nice thumbnails from this guy that's how i found it right he started capping but then kid just came out of nowhere and uh, knocked him back right so that's something you want to keep in mind that if you're yamato then you're gonna get knocked back and uh, that's gonna stop you from capping even if it's um you know not ideal next we're gonna take a look at uh, me and my friend alter actually we're just uh, showing a couple things right so if you're a defender with high defense or high damage reduction yamato will not deal much damage so you can actually just take the hit so you don't fall for her counter by mistake right and you only use your dodge when she fully charges it because otherwise she's not gonna knock you back so it doesn't matter if she hits you with it now of course under 50 percent hp she got some damage increase and stuff like that but Let's take a look at uh, Robin here, right? This is a not buffed Robin, not at all. And she's not dealing that much damage. I'm not even holding my skill. And as you can see, charging her skill too. And then I dodge, get the free perfect dodge on that. So let me increase the quality, right, uh, real quick. I'll just put it 720. And as you can see, she's not dealing that much damage, right? Uh, of course, this is, uh, I'm not getting my attack. I'm not getting my defense buffs yet. And now that I have them, and especially now with this hand skill, I'm good, right? I'm going to tank these hits. I'm not worried. She cannot knock me back. She cannot do anything. So literally, my strategy against uh, Yamato is to just tank the hits. There's nothing she can do, right? Let's take a look here. Quick hits, for example, right? Now, after that, I got my defense buff. She's dealing 100, 200 damage. It's nothing. There's no reason for me to ever attack Yamato unless she charges her skill. And that's when I dodge. Otherwise, I don't do anything, right? Now, let's take a look at a high damage reduction character like um, Page 1. Right? She cannot do anything to page one. Again, she can only knock back. Not from this. If I don't hit her with her counter, she's not going to knock me back. So, boom. I can just constantly just tank these hits. She cannot do anything to get me off my treasure. Right? And if she and here, for example, this is what I'm saying. See, Bullet here is charging his skill. Right? And even though he's charging his skill to Tremor, Yamatos here, my friend, started charging his skill too. So now he cannot get Tremored. And so he uses that and boom. Now, of course, I was watching, so I forgot to dodge there. But the point is, if you try to tremor her or do anything to her, it's actually just not going to work out. Because, well, you can't when she's charging her skill too. Kind of like uh, Roger charging his skill too. Right? And here is, okay, now I know that she's going to counter or use her skill too. That's the only time I need to dodge. So she doesn't get an attack buff or counter. Now here, I know she's going to counter. I know the timing of the counter. Instead of dodging, I use my skill too. So that way I KO her and... I get a free KO that way because I know that in the last second of the uh, counter, that's how it works. Also, fixed damage like we showed uh, in the Akainu clip of PNG, right? Here, I'm doing 1,200. She's healing 1,500. So again, it's just net healing for the Yamato. Nothing very important. Also, finally, if your character cannot get knocked back, it's fine. Just take the hits, right? You don't need to do worry about anything because even if you hit her, you will just fall back down, right? A couple characters have this. So now she's going to counter and I'm still going to hit her and I'm still going to fall on the ground, right? So if I can tank the hit, that's completely fine, right? Just make sure that uh, under 50%, she will deal more damage. So that's that for Yamato, guys. And uh, big menace, this Yamato, but there are ways to counter her. So play smart and hopefully these tips help. So let's talk about the first official third year anniversary EX in EX Kaido. Now this guy is a beast at tanking because he can get up to 70% defense buff, which most characters just cannot go through. Most characters will end up dealing single digit damage if they don't have attack buffs or damage increase. And you need a lot of that to deal damage to Kaido. Now, 
If you cannot get those things, then try not to damage him. Now, if it's your first time facing EX Kaido, try it. Test out the matchup a couple times. See if you can deal damage overall. But if you're dealing less than 3% of his health, he ends up just healing from you. Even if you deal like 7%, he heals back 3% of that. So you're not going to deal too much damage and his team boost will heal him up. And he has other ways to heal by knocking you back. So for the most part, it might be better to just try to do other things if you cannot deal a lot of damage to this guy. And one way to deal a lot of damage is to just wait for team boost, right? In team boost, your attack scales much better than his defense. So you'll be able to deal a lot of damage. Now, if your character is like someone not that great at dealing damage and there's a Roger nearby or an Odin or something great like that, let them attack. Because yeah, during team boost, they will deal much more damage than you. And the last thing you would want is for them to fall on the floor when your Roger Kamusaris and his Kamusari doesn't land on the Kaido, removing your teammates buff and also just not making kaido take more damage right and once his treasure area is filled up more than 80 percent which with him it's so easy to do because he can fill it up to 150 well he can't get knocked back or stats is inflicted and with his insanely high defense it's just disgusting so let's take a look at this right he's fighting this uruj dealing good damage to him but look at this he gets hit by a kainu for 11 damage why? Because Akainu, at this point, probably doesn't have an attack buff. And this definitely did not help him. Because since he did not incinerate Kaido, he did not get another attack buff. And he only dealt 11. Which healed Kaido for 800. So, he just basically, Kaido, or Akainu used a skill to heal Kaido for 800. Now, because of team boost, Kaido healed for another 18,000. But that's something you need to keep in mind. If his treasure area is more than 80%, he's going to not get knocked back. And, and this skill does knock back, but Kaido just fell on the floor. Right? Uh, nullify stagger as well. Like, it's just nasty, right? So he didn't get knocked back and stuff. So disgusting, right? Another tip is to stay near the dragon. I don't know why. It just becomes easier to dodge. So like in this case, boom. Like you see, I... I that should have hit me, but it didn't because I was near him. So just stay near his things take sound cues, practice dodging that, it's just gonna work out well for you. So shout out to Mamba, here he was actually using my, uh, showcasing my Robin gameplay, which, you know, much appreciated from him. And that was pretty cool, all right? Next, um, you know, beware of his skill too, no matter what. So let's shout out to BX Ray for this clip, right? He's coming to back cap, but then he notices, right? There's a Kaido, so, you know, let's wait out for his skill too. Now guys, remember, you don't wanna be here because if you're here, you're still going to get hit by it. I don't know why the range is just insane like that, but that's how it works, right? So, boom, he just waits for it, and there you go. Starts capturing the flag, which is always great. Also, all his skills is knockback. So, what was one way to counter him? To get attack buffs. Well, what if I told you that both his skills knock you back, and when he knocks you back, he heals? But not just that, he also removes your attack buff. So here, shout out to Luckman for this, right? Luckman's just here, chilling, right? There's a Kaido charging his skill. And Luckman's using this. And he's dealing good damage, right? As you can see, he has an attack buff. But now, the Kaido's gonna come and knock him back, which removes his knockback. Or, sorry, which removes his attack buff, right? So, of course, uh, being... Roger, he actually heals a lot of it, but still that dealt some good damage. So shout out to Lickman for this, you know. And the next, uh, when to dodge, right? Now, with the Kainu, when his hand's in the air, like he don't care. With Kaido, shout out to Hunt for this, it's when his head's in the air, like he don't care, right? Now his head's like kind of like, ah. Uh, and so at that point, you can start dodging, right? If you have really good connection, maybe even when he starts landing his head down, you can start dodging. But here you dodge, boom, get a nice free perfect dodge. Now, of course, it's Kaido above 80%. He cannot get knocked back or stunned. So, you know, Rayleigh is not the best in this case. But the stun actually should have happened, I think, regardless, because it's a trait stun, I think. So I don't know what happened there. But anyways, finally... Um, He's good against Kazuki. He deals more damage to Kazuki. He's good against multi-hit because multi-hit's a small damage that he's just going to heal from. And when above the treasure area is filled, he's good against knockback and status effects. But some ca counters are Orobi's fast capturing speed. Marco, for example, has insane capturing speed and cannot get knocked back and stuff. And also, it's that reduce defense or just ignore defense, like this um, chopper. So again, shout out to Nico-chan for this. But as you can see, boom, 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 boom. Look at that, half his health gone because this skill ignores defense, okay? And also, um, now you might say, okay, now what's she gonna do from there? Well, good news is, if we just move up a bit um, here, 
right? Um, she can start to use skill 2, and now that Chopper fell on the ground and got confused, he has 50% damage increase. So now his normals will start dealing damage, right? For 5k, 5k, and then his skill, this one ignores damage reduction, which Kaido doesn't have, but still, it will deal a lot of damage to him because of the attack buff, right? So that's something you need to keep in mind. If you get attack buffs, it's going to work out great for you. All right, so that's for EX Kaido, a massive tank, but there are ways to deal with him, namely using just characters that have a lot of attack and a lot of attack buffs. So here's a quick clip of 33 Go using Whitebeard to demolish Kaido, right? And of course, he was able to do this because Whitebeard gets a lot of attack buffs. And of course, boom, he was able to do 20, 30,000 damage with his skill one. And of course, he stacked up his attack before, and that's how he was able to deal so much damage. So... EX Luffy, in my opinion, the best EX in the game at the moment. How do you counter him? Well, there's not much you can do, but when he's in his base form, unlike Akainu, where you still have to worry about his skill 1 before he uses his skill 2, with base form EX Luffy, both his skills take a good amount of time to cast, so you can get a dodge if you don't fall for it when he's using his normals on you, okay? In his base form. Now, I couldn't find a clip of someone just being patient because, I, I mean... Yeah, but look, it takes a long time to cast. You can dodge this, right? You can see it coming and you can dodge, all right? If he comes at you and he uses his normals, don't dodge. Otherwise, you'll get a free tremor, a free knockback. You'll become in that state. Here, you get a free perfect dodge. If you have a fast timing skill, you can even use it then, okay? Next, above 97% HP, Luffy cannot be status inflicted, okay? So he cannot be status inflicted as full HP. So here, for example, this is some gameplay of has. He uses his skill one and it hits Luffy, but Luffy was at full HP. So while it did a lot of damage, he did not get a flame. Now this was very smart of has because has doesn't want as a Kainu to aflame Luffy because Luffy will heal from a flame or incinerate or fix damage that's small. He heals 6% per tick. Right, we'll look at that in a bit. So this was very smart from Has to wait for the Luffy to have full HP and then deal the attack. But if you're using Perurin, for example, or a character that relies on you status inflicting the character with a tremor or a stun, well then you can do it on Luffy if he's above 97% HP. All right. Next is uh, if you have a stun character, well, this is actually a strategy you can use. Right? Don't dodge. Like use this. Like you can see he's hitting my uh, page one. And then I dodge right before he does his last hit and then turn into my form, right? Because guess what? I'm not being stunned, right? I cannot be stunned. So characters that cannot be stunned have it good for them, right? Because this Blackbeard cannot dodge. He's being stunned each time. Whereas uh, page one or a character like page one or someone like that who has a lot of damage reduction is taking no damage at all. And then you can just dodge his last hit and then boom. Again, this is all practice. It's practice. It's not a real thing. You, you you cannot just suddenly do this, but it's something you can practice, right? And here we have some PNG stuff. Ooh, then like this. So if we take a look at this one, right? Um, here, PNG, right? He got turned into the state because um, Kaido's last hit deals multiple hits. And now, when Luffy... Luffy's not going to deal much damage to Jozu, but now that he's using this, right? PNG instantly dodges this. But he didn't need to, right? And I'm with Jozu, it's fine. You can dodge anytime because you're not going to take damage because Jozu is very good against Luffy. But if you have any other character that's not as tanky as Jozu or Page One, look at this. You could have dodged here. When he stops attacking, you would have gotten a perfect dodge and you would have still been standing up, right? Instead of going on the ground and taking this hit, which is, you know, drastically a big hit. It did deal some damage, not much, right? I'm not, PNG did the right thing, right? Because he's using Jozu. But in case your character is not as tanky as Jozu or page one, then you want to dodge. If your character can avoid stun like bullet, then you probably want to dodge in between transitioning from the multi-hit to the big hit because the big hit deals a lot of damage, okay? And here's an example of him just getting healed by a flame, right? So uh, shout out to Beast for this clip. Um, let me like this one as well. And as you can see, um, he Akainu's incinerate deals 900, but it heals him for 1500. So do not incinerate him, do not use Kid on him because you'll just heal it up, right? There's no point in doing these things to him, okay? And finally, just to show you how much he's tanky or so, how much damage he deals, right? He's uh, sorry, this is from Swarly, and um, 
he deals many hits which you know it's pretty much healing the kaido if we're being serious here uh, most of the heal hits are just healing kaido because these hits do not ignore defense even though uh, he has an attack buff it's not that big uh yet but then the last hit 30k 30k on that last hit right so you you know it's important to keep in mind that it's worth it because luffy at this point he's just stacking up his attack and then this last hit 30k i don't know if you guys saw it but 30k which is insane 30,000 hit damage without a crit nothing it just disregards defense which is what kaido's tankiness is based on so his last hit disregards any sort of defense buff so again to summarize do not status inflict him above 97% because he just cannot um, be status at that point. Don't bother with um, uh, with low hitting uh, fixed uh, damage like Kid or Akainu. His last hit can target also, right? So just keep that in mind. He might hit do, 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 do somewhere else, but then target you. So always beware with your dodge because you don't want him doing that and think you're safe because he's aiming there the last hit will target like Izo, right Izo's skill shoots many hits but the last one can target even if you're not the one he's shooting at so you want to keep that in mind now who counters him of course characters that uh nullify stun because they can dodge the last hit and then use a skill like i showed you um with page one here or like with png's clip on uh, jozu right also anyone that nullifies tremor or status inflictions is good stuns and uh, tremors is something that luffy does so of course nullifying those is great as well and high damage reduction defenders like uh, jozu page one kid and stuff like that can also be very good and um he's good against characters with high defense because he has high attack and high attack counters high defense he's also good against shock and entrance characters because shock and entrance characters uh, he cannot be shocked or entrance now the good news is bandai is kind of working around that by allowing characters like judge to deal more damage to characters that nullify shock boa stampede um gets a defense buff when she's dealing with characters with shock and above 70 percent this guy actually gets some dr against attackers so he can tank attackers when he's above 70 percent and of course he heals from fixed damage so he's good against that as well so that's that about ex luffy and finally we're going to talk about ex zephyr and now finally let's get into the newest ex in the game ex zephyr and my first tip against him is to not use multi-hits because you will just give him his skill one back faster of course he can get it just by knocking you back but as you can see Dofi just attacking him gave him his skill much much faster so if you're not going to deal much damage just try to avoid multi-hits in general because as you can see he's not dealing much one knockback will pretty much heal this and of course you're just giving him see you saw that jump that's just from every hit so a multi-hit will give him a fast jump similarly to blackbeard so that's the first tip don't use multi-hits if you cannot deal a lot of damage and next tip is don't knock him back because you can't unless you have a teammate with him so if there's no teammate with him you cannot knock him back he'll just fall on the floor luckily here in this case um of course he was able to get knocked back because there was a dofi with him in the treasure area so that's why you were able to knock him back and again shout out to vegeta for these clips of course i'm sure you guys already know him because he's kind of the zephyr guy every opbr youtuber that had six star gameplay pretty much just took vegeta's and so it's either him or navy hq so I know this is Garp, not Zephyr, but the matchup is pretty similar. If you don't have any damage increase, this is what's going to happen. You're going to deal no damage. Uh, this is sped up, by the way. And uh, you're going to take 10 damage only, pretty much, because uh, he has full damage reduction. And this skill did 12 and normally should knock back. But again, since Zephyr would be alone in his treasure area, you wouldn't be able to knock him back. So again, it would be a waste of time and you just gave him his skill one faster. So that's something you need to consider. And if he's in buff state, that flame wouldn't even be applied here. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, just to show you how much damage he gets, like without his buffed state, that's 50% damage reduction that he doesn't get, yet he was still able to tank this Luffy pretty well. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. And uh, here's a clip from OPBR Gamer. Actually, very important clip that I needed so badly. But as you can see, look at this. All right, now he's going to attack Zephyr with his skill. Okay. All right, pay attention, guys, to his skill one. It keeps getting reduced because every time you, as a power user, attack Zephyr, you get your skill cooldown reduced. So if you're using multi-hits, not only are you giving him skill one, but you're reducing your skill one cooldown as well. So that's something you need to keep in mind, that that's why your skill is going to go back. Okay, so that's something very important as well. He cannot get... Now, if he's in his buff state, 
you can know it by these yellow orbs around him. All right, that's how you can tell if he's in his buff state or not. And again, Perurin cannot uh, candy land him or candy man him, candy land someone else. <laughs> but if he's not in his buff state, even if he's in his treasure area, you can still entrance him or do anything you want, right? So it's in his buff state that he's going to get the buffs. So again, this is shout out to Swarly using Navy HQ gameplay. Now, I do want to say, Navy HQ, you still owe me that letter. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and finally, uh, here's some clip from your main man, Roman, Roman Puss. And as you can see, he's in his buff state, shown by this yellow orb. And uh, Akainu used his skill one, but it did not aflame him because he has his uh, buff state. So yeah, that's that about Zephyr. We are potentially getting the announcement of the newest EX in a bit. So once we know how to counter him, I'll make a video like this pretty much just for that newest EX. Uh, and yeah, hopefully that will help. But that's that for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this helped. And now I'm going to talk a bit about making this video. <sighs> and it's done. I'm finally done with this video, guys. You guys don't understand how happy and relieved I am because this video, I've been working on it for the past week. Because I had to spend two days for a couple hours every day just looking into every tip I want to give for every EX and then looking for the clips. Dude, that took three or four days and I'm not joking when I say I spent two, three hours every single one of those days looking for these clips because it wasn't just about finding like, hey, tips for EX Luffy, let me look at EX Luffy gameplay, right? I had to find from the other POV, people facing EX Luffy. So I had to watch so many games just waiting for an EX Luffy. Then I needed that specific thing I needed to have happen happen. It took so long. So I want to give a massive shout out to everyone you guys saw. Please check them out. Um, everyone I showcased in this video, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that they did what they did because I wouldn't have been able to do this. Otherwise, I would have had to ask others to join private rooms and take up their time for hours recording again and again. So this saves others so much much time and I'm, I'm so grateful for this community and I'm not joking when I say like just before recording it took like at least nine hours of just doing things and now I literally have been recording for the past four hours and I'm so happy to have this out of the way because I had to you know arrange the clip in the right order, talk over the right clip, and re-record if I was st stuttering, stuttering too much like this. And all that to make it more bearable for you guys to watch. So I really hope it helped. And, and for those listening till now, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate this. So I really hope this helped a couple people, even if you're older in the game. And if it didn't, well, hey, I had fun making it, but I'm so glad it's done. Now I just have to put all the clips together all my recordings one after the other and then make a thumbnail and then upload it oh i'm basically done basically and i'm so happy and so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully it helped and as usual peace